Good evening, everyone. Good evening, one and all. Oh, has it been a busy, busy weekend? On top of the fact that, of course, every Saturday we like to do a field day in the house, you know, just cleaning from top to bottom, make sure everything's good because, let's face it, during the work week, everybody's busy. So I'm sure you guys can all appreciate that. But on top of all that, Sunday, today was actually an interesting day. So let me um, recap a little bit. And, well, before I recap anything, one of the things I will tell you, and I am very open, very public about this, is that there are times where I will levy an accusation. There are times where I will have a position on something, but I always reserve the right to speak on that topic later on, to revise my position. And there are times where I still maintain that position, but I also have to give credit where credit is due. Because all too often what we find is it's easy to sit here and just go ahead and lob bombs at people. You know, I know several people right now in a number of these races, whether it be candidates or surrogates out here, that will just carpet bomb everything and just want to put people on blast. Well, I think there is a need to put some people on blast, no doubt, but you need to be open to the idea that, you know, maybe there's a reason why a certain person or a certain group are doing things the way that they're doing that you may not understand, that I may not understand. And if I'm wrong about it, I'm okay with admitting that I'm wrong because I gain nothing by, by doubling down on a position that may be born out of ignorance. And I do a disservice to you guys if I keep that position of ignorance without changing my thought process based upon the evidence, based upon what is going on or the reasoning behind it. And it is very important that, you know, when I talk about these issues, that I always revisit them. Now, Washera County, that's my county here in the heart of central Wisconsin. And um, yeah, I know it's not dead center in central Wisconsin, but you know what? If I'm here, it's the heart of central Wisconsin. That's it. But um, that all being said, I've been very critical about my county Republican Party for years. I have literally. And when I tell you that I have looked for my county Republican Party for seven years, I am not BSing you. I am not making things up. This is not being hyperbolic. I have taught the, the crazy part about it is. I am a very public person. And what I mean public is that I can't go two counties over and not have somebody know me. I can't do something stupid in one county and not have somebody in another county not know about it. That's how much people know me. And it's not because I'm something special. It's just as a byproduct of my profession. So it's not like I'm not I'm hard to find. I'm not. I'm, very, I'm probably one of the most easiest people to find. So for seven years, I have looked for the Republican Party. I've, I've not seen anything, not heard anything. I hear whispers about a Lincoln Day dinner here and there and all that other stuff. And, of course, if you look back on some of my other videos, I actually found the County Republican Party this past August at our Washera County uh, Fair. And I was not too happy with what I saw there. And then, of course, I went on blast on that. Now. That being said, I got in contact with, and this is through the efforts of Hilario De Leon, who uh, he works for RPW, and also Brian Westrate, who's um, he's I believe he's running for uh, for the Wis uh, Wisconsin State Senate here. So they actually got me some contact information a couple months ago. I made contact with the acting chair, a, a young lady by the name of Pat Powers, and we got in touch with one another. And it was a good conversation. And I actually made it a point to join the county party this year. Now, why did I wait so long to do it? Well, part of it, like I said, I can't find you for the last seven years. But the other part of the reasons why I didn't want to do it is because, well, I didn't see the point of it. As I told you guys before, you know, I oftentimes my position on Republicans is that they tend to be weak, feckless, they're road bumps on the road to the progressive agenda. The problem is, though, is that if I'm going to sit here and levy criticism, if I'm going to sit here and, and throw pipe bombs, then I need to also be part of the solution. 
I need to also be part of, you know, what is it that I'm trying to do? Am I trying to elevate my name in doing this? Well, that's not a good reason for doing anything. Am I just lobbing bombs just to see every, you know, just to talk trash? You know, I don't need to do that. I have kids I can talk trash to. And trust me, they're good at responding back. Especially the 10-year-old. I had that little kid's kind of sus. Anyway, the point simply is, it's easy to sit here, especially doing what I do behind a microphone. It is so incredibly easy to just sit here, play Monday morning quarterback, armchair quarterback, you know, keyboard commando. That is the easiest thing to do. What's harder is to come up with informed opinion. What's harder is to be a part of the process. And what's harder is to also admit when you may and may not have been wrong. And in this case, there's elements of all three of these involved in here. See, last month we got the membership, um, what we would call it, letter, I guess. Normally I'd be used to like, okay, let me go on the website. I'll join there. No, no website. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. But um, so last month, my wife and I, we actually joined the uh, Washera County Republican Party. So we are members. And today we went to the Washera County Lincoln Day, Reagan Day Luncheon Caucus. And I have got to tell you, it was very well put together. They may not do a lot of events right now. They may not. They may only do one or two events per year. But what we saw here today, well, I drove in to the location. It's a place called, a little town called Dakota. And what I saw in the parking lot was wonderful. Because somehow, some way, the word's been getting out. And the word's been getting out because we actually had a pretty packed area. I would say we had about 40, 50 people that were in attendance. This includes, you know, maybe closer to 60 if we include the candidates. And we literally, and I'm I, I, not exaggerating on this number, we had about 21 speakers at this event. 21 people. And I'm going to get to them here in a minute, not one by one, because there's so many people that I need, that I need to, to give shout outs to. But now that I'm a member of the county party scene, it was never my intention. Just as I, when I levy criticism against RPW, it has never been my intention to want to run the Republican Party here in the state of Wisconsin down. It is never my intention to say, you know what, let's just, let's tear the whole thing down, as some candidates have said. To me, that's foolish. That is like throwing the baby out with the bathwater. My criticisms are out there to be responded to and answered. If an individual so desires, but my overall criticism is meant to strengthen the party. Now, is my allegiance necessarily to the Republican Party? No, not by a long shot. My allegiance is to the conservative movement. And, and I think you guys are, are very well aware of that. But what is the single greatest apparatus to have my conservative values, your conservative values, to be enacted via legislation, representation, or the bully pulpit. It is through the Republican Party. Why do you think we have so many libertarians right now running as Republicans? Because they know they can't win as libertarians, so they come over to the Republican Party, which we'll get into that here in a bit. But before I go any further, let me get some shout outs in here because we got folks up here in the chat room and I want to give, uh, you know, lots of love for you guys here. And by the way, if you guys got a drink, a cocktail, cigarette, cigar, whatever, just no crack pipes or anything like that. Uh, none of that Joe Biden stuff here. Have at it. It's Sunday fun day. Let's make make use of this here. Um, we got Carlton Huffman here. He's uh, from the Kevin Nicholson campaign. Saw him today. Stephanie Suchek. If you guys haven't seen her, she just did a live video. Make sure you check that out. Darlene Link from Milwaukee. Good to see you. Shelly, how are you, my friend? Good to see you here. I will be talking to you here relatively soon. Scott Noble, what's going on, big dog? Good to see you here. We got brother Orlando Owens. Orlando, oh, I think Orlando scared somebody today, but we'll, we'll talk about that here. Oh, man. 
Cheryl, how are you? Good to see you tonight. Good to see you. Let's see who else, who else we have. We just saw Adam Fisher pop up in here. What's going on, brother? Good to see you. Ryan, how are you? Good to see you. Guys, do me a favor. Make sure you smash that like button. Share this video out. We got uh, topics galore to go over here tonight. So when I had the opportunity to talk to a lot of people, and it was really cool, and maybe I'm going to bounce around all over the place. I am very tired, as I'm sure a lot of you guys are. And right now, I just want to have a cocktail, a good Jack and Coke, and just kind of kick back in my recliner. But I really wanted to get into the subject matter. Um, individuals we had speaking today. We had Kevin Nicholson speaking, Orlando Owens, Adam Fisher. We had representatives, uh, Scott Klug, Kevin Peterson. Um, who else am I missing on the representative side? No, we had senators galore. We had uh, Patrick Tested. We had um, Joan Baldwig. I mean, and I'm missing so many people. There were local candidates there, too. I mean, I, I was very, very humbled to hear a lot of these people speak. And I'll tell you, let me start with some of the criticisms that I've had with certain people over, over a period of time. Uh, you take a look at individuals like, you know, Kevin Peterson, not the most dynamic speaker in the world. Uh, maybe not even the most personable person in the world. Um, you know, and I've levied that criticism before. But I will tell you. While that may be true, listening to him speak today on subject matter, on policy, on nuance, I was blown away. I Maybe he's not everybody's cup of tea. My understanding was about a month ago, he caught some flack with some people up in Wapaka. And I, I love the idea that you hear a lot of people say, well, you need to primary these people. You know, that's great. You want to primary them? And then what? Most people have this idea that somehow they're going to primary an individual and they're going to go ahead and run for office and they're going to be great at the job. No, never mind to the fact that these people are policy wonks. No, never mind to the fact that these people know these issues inside and out. And the very fact that you're going to come in here as a rank amateur and not know what you're doing. See, I almost made that mistake this cycle. I almost made that mistake this cycle because I felt slighted by Glenn Grothman back in August during the what uh, the Washera County uh, Fair. I felt slighted, and I'll admit to that. You know, and that's where some of my you know impulsiveness comes into play. Now, of course, I reined it in quite a bit um, from that moment, and I never really went off the deep end on that. But my point simply is, is that you know. I want to see somebody who's more responsive to the people. I'll tell you what, Glenn Grothman was there today. And for somebody who's not the most exciting speaker in the world, brother was on fire today. He was emotional today. He talked with knowledge today. Do we throw the baby out with the bathwater and just replace everybody? Because one might feel slighted. One doesn't feel that they're in alignment on one particular issue. To me, that's, that's, that's foolish. It's ridiculous. So I'll tell you, when it comes to individuals like that, my respect for them has gone up considerably as of today. You know, do I still have criticisms with people within the Wisconsin legislative body from the assembly to the Senate? Yes, I do. But like I've told you guys, where I will levy criticism, I must also give praise for when it, somebody does something that's ill-conceived or perceived to be, we must call that out. But when you do something correct, when you are on point, when you are truly representing the people, that needs to be called out just the same. You, If you're going to criticize, you must praise. Tracy, what's going on? Good to see you here. Uh, this young lady, I, I got to give her, I got to give this one, uh, this young lady some props. I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, State Senator um, Joan Baldwick. She's my state senator. And um, it is not an election year for her. She doesn't go up for, for re-election until uh, 24. But she stayed four hours at this counting caucus. Four hours. Wow. And why? Because she was there to show support for all of the candidates. She was there to be a part of an event that her, that are for her constituents. Actually, it's not even for her constituents when I think about it, because with Sheriff County, for the most part, falls under Pat Chester, Pat, Patrick Teston, excuse me, 
in his territorial district. Joan Baldwin's district kind of is uh, somewhere in between where I live and Watoma, which, and there's a five mile differential in there. But yes, yeah, she was there. A state senator who didn't have to be there, given up at least six hours of her day, including travel time, to be at a caucus is something that should be praised. It should be lauded. It should be giving credit. Again, I got to give all of these people credit, especially these three in particular, because it was one of those things where my perception was, okay, there's a lot of do nothing. Why aren't you out here raising more hell? But the reality is, is that these aren't the hell-raising type of people. These are the policy wonks. These are the people that get you the information. These are the people that you want on your side. And I think it's kind of interesting that there's so many people out here right now. You just want to toss everything out. You just want to go blame every Republican in the world. You want to blame RPW. And I asked this question here, and I, I, I sincerely want an answer on this. Because there are people out here that, that are, are making claims about RPW, Republican Party of Wisconsin. So the question comes to me, okay, that's great that you're making RPW a punching bag. I get it if you do it here and there a little bit, fine. But it's every single time some folks do it. And it's like, okay, are you running in a primary? Are you running against a Democrat or are you running against RPW? You got to pick one. Because at a certain point, that dog whistle gets real old, real old. Fortunately, today, I didn't see very much of that. Like I said, if you're going to make your claim, you know, make your issue known, by all means, make your issue known. But don't let it be the only thing that you're doing. Moving along, and I'm going to go back here in a minute to the speakers, but the caucus, it was actually really enlightening to see that. And it's been something that I've been noticing over this past, I'd say, year as I become more involved in state politics, as I become, as the show has grown. And thank you to all of you who have been a part of that. But as you see behind the curtain, you kind of see what a bit of a mess the primary process is. And I think this year is a little bit more of a mess because we have a lot of, you know, Johnny come lately's. We have a lot of libertarians coming in here running as, you know, Republicans. And in truth, if we're to call anyone a rhino, that's a rhino, right? You're a libertarian running as a Republican. Rhino. Republican in name only. That's supposedly how that works anyway. But, um, you know, having having had the opportunity to see behind the curtain has been very eye-opening to me um, because you, you find out that not everybody is perfect, that everybody that's running here are just normal people. Some with bigger egos than others, but these are your average ordinary people. Most of these people have jobs on top of the fact that they're running for a public office. So it's so easy for us to sit here and criticize these people without the fact that we're not even putting in the work that they're putting in. These people are out here, they're putting in, you know, not just eight hour days, not just 10 hour days, but 14, 16, 18 hour days on top of drive time, on top of executive legislative sessions. Now I'm not saying this to give them a pass. I'm saying this because you need to be able to see behind the curtain and manage what's realistic versus what you're wishing for. And then understand that wishes are just that, wishes. If you want to make something a reality, then yes, you need to go out and put that much work in. But if you're going to be putting in that kind of work, you damn sure better be ready to put those 16, 18 hour days. You need to go to these caucuses on a Sunday afternoon and you don't want to. You got to put in the miles. You got to put in the work. And not just think you somehow are entitled to it. And everybody I saw today, they've been putting in work. And I got and again, I got to give more shout outs. Uh, Kevin Nicholson. Top of my list right there. I would give a shout out to that man. I may not necessarily agree with on, on, on all of his positions, but you know what? I said this before, an 80% win is still a win. And, um, you know, uh, he came up to me, shook my hand. We had a little bit of a conversation. Obviously, he's very busy. I will always be grateful for the time that he allows, uh, allows us to have a conversation. So I definitely got to give a shout out to him. Orlando Owens coming up here from Milwaukee. Um, you know, we I 
told him about this and definitely wanted to see him up here. And boy, he lit the room up. I kind of felt bad for Glenn Grothman. I felt bad for Glenn Grothman because he had to follow Orlando Owens after speaking. Uh, if you've ever seen Orlando speak, you don't want to follow him. <laughs> you really don't. But um, yeah, him, Patrick Tested, David Burnham, Cindy Warner, Adam Fisher, a lot of folks out here. Um, Justice Dan Kelly, I had the opportunity to meet with him. He was gracious enough to give me a good five minutes of his time and have conversation. That is a phenomenal human being. I guess my point is here is, is that when I look at everyone that, that's out here, everyone putting in this work, there's a reason why. And there was actually, there was a common theme. There was a lot of themes going on. And, you know, of course, you know, some of them were election integrity. Some of them were, you know, don't screw up the red wave. Some of them were, you know, crime. The, the normal talking points you would expect. But the one that I really took home from several people, I don't want to be doing this. I, but I got five kids at home. I don't want to be doing this. But I have children. In other words, they're stepping up because no one else is. And I got to give credit for everybody that's out here that's on the campaign trail, whether I agree with you 100%, 80%, 65.4%, 6 it doesn't matter. The very fact that you guys are taking, you're literally putting your lines on pause to come out here, open yourself to criticism and being told that you're this, that, whatever, whether it be true or not. And the very fact that you guys are doing that, I, you know, it's, it's a hat tip for you guys, really. And I want to make sure that, that I give my, my, my heartfelt thank you and sincerest well wishes. Because I'll tell you, man, these guys, when you're out here, especially this time of year, especially in northern Wisconsin, you really put yourself in harm's way in so many different ways. You know, again, you're putting yourself out there into the public. You get, you're out there on the roads. And I don't know if you guys have driven central Wisconsin roads, but you got deer, you got turkey, you got people, you got truckers that decide they want to run 300 miles an hour and think that for whatever reason, inertia doesn't apply to them on icy roads. Oh, I've seen that way too many times, way too many. Uh, let me look at the chat room here because I don't want to, I got so much stuff here. I had so much. Hey, Carlton, we almost got a cow today. Are you serious? See, anywhere else, I would have I've been like, ah, you watched Twister again, didn't you? <laughs> Funny guy. You watched but around here? No. Somebody's cow kind of wanders out into the road. And, yeah, you almost clip it. Totally believe it. Totally believe that. Uh, let's see here. Stephanie said, uh, was just on a Zoom call tonight with Ron Johnson. He was working hard with the state party to help get local candidates elected. They're giving resources and uh, help to school board, county boards, et cetera, to all the candidates. Yes, and, and Ron Johnson's been real big on that. My understanding is that, you know, between him and several others, one of their biggest goals was to get people running for offices that Democrats were, had run traditionally unopposed. And again, think about that. You're going to put yourself up for, you know, into a race where in all likelihood you're going to lose and not just lose, but just get slaughtered by numerically. And you got to put yourself out there for it. Wow. I got to give you credit for that. And, but there's something to be learned from that too, by the way, when you lose an election, you can't just be like, Oh, whoa, whoa, poor is me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, no. We don't lose. We win or we learn. So the question is, is what did you learn from losing that election? And what can you do to apply it when you go run again? Stephanie also said we get involved. Uh, it can help us give a new perspective. Ain't that the truth? Tracy mentioned on here, you can't run against uh, RPW. You have to run against the liberals. Well, and that's kind of that's kind of my question, you know, because I think a lot of people like to use. It's a straw man argument. You know, you're creating a punching bag here. I get it, but at a certain point, enough is enough. At least that's my thought process. Ryan, 
I like, you know, Ryan, and I've seen Ryan in a couple of different uh, chat forums. He's uh, real big on liberty and American principles. And um, so he goes, you know, see, I vote for liberty and American principles and not against anything. And I think that's really important when you're looking at your candidates. Don't vote against somebody. 2020 is a prime example of why you don't vote against somebody. Because we had a lot of people vote against Trump. They didn't vote for Biden. They just voted against Trump. And, well, that's a whole other hot mess. And I can go on for hours on that here. Stephanie mentioned on here, we can point out the problems and the weaknesses with the party and various candidates, elected officials. But it gets old when all someone does is criticize and ignore the good things. And that is really the biggest point of what I'm doing here tonight. It is easy for me to sit here and blast Glenn, you know, Gr State Congressman Glenn Grothman. You know, I can sit here and mock him. It's like, oh, boy, oh, there's free food. There's Glenn. It's funny. I get it. Still is funny because I actually saw him do it again today. But when the man's on point, like dude was over here slamming down papers, getting all worked up, you know, about the liberal media and just, you know, talking about immigration, crime, the misrepresentation from the left. And he wasn't wrong. That's the thing. And that's what I like to see out of, out of, out of an individual like Glenn Grothman. You're not going to get the most dynamic speaker in the world from Glenn Grothman, but you will get somebody who knows what the hell he's talking about. So let's just accept the facts for what they are, you know. Thank you, Stephanie. Stephanie mentioned here, good stuff tonight. Adam, I, if you guys ever get a chance to, to meet Adam Fisher, and he's running for governor too, and you get a chance to talk to him for more than five minutes, I'm telling you, Adam is a trip. And, and, and I don't mean that to be so incredibly informal, but he is a very raw talker. And um, you'll have some good laughs. You'll talk over some good policy. Definitely someone you need to, to talk to if you get the opportunity. A cow out of the pen. See, that's, you got to be careful. Got to be careful. You don't know what you're going to run into over here. You run into a black bear, a deer. I had a turkey, literally, this far. If I was to tell you it was this far. From my windshield, I would not be lying to you. This, this, I didn't know turkeys could fly, by the way. Apparently, turkeys can fly. And it flew right over my windshield. And uh, boy, did I get lucky. Well, anyway, like I said, I'm going to be kind of all over the place tonight. But yeah, we had our county caucus. Uh, we passed a resolution, unfortunately. I didn't think it was a very smart one. It's a no endorsement option uh, for the uh, convention. I think that's just a bad idea, just simply for the fact that if you don't want to have a resolution or uh, an endorsement, don't vote. Pretty simple. Uh, but then we also voted for, for officers. And I told you guys here a couple of weeks ago that I had intention of running for the county, work, uh, the county, Washera County uh, Republican Party chair. And um, I did that. Well, that was the intention going in. But then I got to thinking. And it was interesting because a gentleman came up to me and was asking, you know, oh, who's running for what? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just kind of here watching, learning. Um, didn't really want to tip my hand one way or the other. And he was telling me, he's like, yeah, well, the mayor of Otoma is looking to potentially uh, run for, you know, the county chair here. I'm like, oh, well, that's cool. You know, I mean, if I decide to run for the county chair, then great. Then there's competition. There's nothing wrong with competition. Steel sharpens steel, right? But as the, the afternoon went on, I kind of was thinking to myself, self, do you really want to be that guy? It's not that I don't think I could be a county chair. It's not that I don't think I could galvanize the vote. But let's be realistic. A lot of these people I'm meeting for the first time. As a matter of fact, I knew the candidates more form informally than I did know the people that were there at the caucus, the, the members. So to them, I'm a relatively unknown quantity, you know, uh, character. I'm an individual they may have seen here and there, but they don't know me, know me. So we need to change that. It's not to say that it'd be bad at the job either. But 
why don't we let somebody else who may be a little more experienced take the helm there? And I put myself out there for the vice chair. And in doing that, I can learn, I can collaborate, I can watch, I can be strategic about anything that I'm doing. And it's not that it's let's plot and plan and try to overthrow it later, but it's a one-year term we're looking at here. It's to finish off this current term. And after giving that some thought and consulting with my wife, the idea was to, okay, let's put my hat in the name for the vice chair. And that is exactly what I did. To learn, to, to, to absorb the knowledge, to inspire, to motivate, to hopefully take a county party that is essentially inactive. And nothing against the event they did today. They, it was an absolutely phenomenal event. But if I could help to inspire, to help the county party grow, to be more than what it currently is, then I'll have done what I had sought out to do in strengthening the party. See, again, it is so easy to sit here and criticize. It is so easy to go ahead and, and just blast, put people on blast. But what are you really doing to be a part of the solution? It is too easy to sit behind this microphone and to go off on something. It becomes much more difficult to have well thought process, a well thought out process, a well thought out motivation, and to say, you know what, maybe I need to think this through, learn, observe, inspire. And that's what I did. There was uh, one other young lady that was running and it went to a vote. And you know what? I ended up winning the vote. So I am currently now the vice chair for the Washara County Republican Party. And it is a duty that I will take very seriously. But I want to keep this in mind that when I am doing the podcast, of course, that doesn't reflect the county party. My podcast is the reflection of my own thoughts, my own questions, my own whatever you want to call it. Different hats for different times, right? But uh, let's take a look over here. Let us take a look. Really appreciate that. David, how are you, sir? Good to see you. Adam is real. He's not a politician. And I do like that about Adam. He's, he's like I said, He's definitely a trip if you get the opportunity to speak with him for a bit. Uh, let's see. Kevin, what's going on? Yeah, no, he's not. Okay. No, we're not going to stir anything up here. We're going to leave that one alone. Um, Let's see here. Shelly, we have too many sacred cows in the past. We don't have to necessarily tear them down uh, when they fall off the path. We just have to hold them accountable. And that's, yes, that is, I think that's, that's another thing, too. Because I know for some folks, there's this idea that, you know what, let's just tear it all down. But why would you want to get rid of experienced people? People that can help you do a better job to tell you how things have been done in the past, where you can collaborate with the old thoughts and the new thoughts and come up with that hybrid of ideas that helps to better everybody. See, and that, that's what, what, where I want to go with that. Let's see here. Liz, how are you, Liz? Good to see you here. Be more is all anyone can ask for every single day. Yes, ma'am. Kim, good to see you. How are you? I got to meet up with Kim one of these days. I have known Kim online for quite some time. And um, Kim looks like she'd just be a, a cool person to hang out with. Because I know, I, I know you'd be slinging some drinks and stuff. So we might have to talk over that stuff. Just get a bunch of us together. Party bus. Um, boy, that would be a hell of a podcast right there. Let's see here. Tracy, thank you, sir. Kevin, thank you, my friend. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Shelly. Darlene, I was mentored uh, for every position I held in the Republican Party. It is uh, great that I can now mentor. And that's, you know, that's kind of an interesting thought there, too. You have politicians that are in office forever. But how often do they mentor what they hope to be their successor? Do they mentor that next level 
of people coming up, the next generation of people that are going to be running for office. Because, and I, and I don't know who, who said this, but it was the idea that government is a necessary evil. And not that in and of itself government is evil, but it has the propensity to, left unchecked, move into an authoritarian uh, realm, which is something we don't want. But government, the necessity of government, especially here in the United States, is to protect individual liberty, individual freedom. So if we don't have those people to help bring up that next level of office holders, then we're dealing with people that refuse to mentor. And I think, you know, we need to see that more in, on the party structure. We need to see that, of course, running, um, you know, in offices. Hell, we need to see that in our day-to-day -day lives for young men and older men. And, I mean, there's nothing wrong with finding mentors. As a matter of fact, if you're a mentor, you may be doing a bit, bigger public service than you even realize. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Scott. I'm happy that you were elected vice chair. <laughs> Tracy's putting the cart before the horse here. Now on to a, bi a bigger office next year for you. We're going to take things one step at a time. Because, uh, you know, honestly, for me, it's just, like I said, it's a learning process. It's an evolution. Let me see what I can do to help inspire and motivate others. Uh, let's see here. Carlton, what you got here? Under the rules of convention, you cannot just uh, vote because the rules are They'll count the votes of the delegates present in participating. Yeah, and I definitely want to get more into that. Scott mentioned here. Like, is it that you don't want to or that you actually physically can't because unless you can't physically do it like you're on top you know of a tibetan mountain i don't want to hear can't that just doesn't work stephanie here congrats thank you thank you orlando yep stephanie this is great here ron johnson is uh great at mentoring others i have learned so much from many people who have more experience than me and that is huge. Who am I going to have on here tonight? I, you know, I thought about trying to have somebody on here tonight, but I'm not going to have anyone else on tonight. Um, I actually have several calls that I have to make tonight. And, of course, I have to pretend to work tomorrow because it's a Monday. So you know how that goes. Let's see here. Liz, we need to see that everywhere. Yeah. Mentorship everywhere from anybody and everybody. If you've got that experience and you can help some young buck come up, uh, there's no reason we can't do that. Scott mentions here, I'm very grateful for all the help Glenn Grothman gave me. He did a fundraiser for me in Black River Falls. Well, and again, you know, an individual like that with the resources, uh, the knowledge, you don't just toss that away because... You're upset about something, so no doubt. All right, guys, we have 40 minutes here. I know if I bring a guest on, I'll probably be on here a good two, three hours because you know that's what I like to do. But I'm going to cut it short here tonight. Be back on Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Make sure you check out the website. Got to make sure we put that up on here. So make sure you check that out. Uh, listen to all the rebroadcasts. Like, share, subscribe, all that other good stuff. But I would leave you guys with this definitely say a prayer give your well wishes do whatever for all the candidates that are out there and they they you guys you guys have a lot of work ahead of you and you guys are on some some treacherous roads and being out there you do put yourselves at risk so you guys definitely could could do you know could use the prayers the well wishes the thoughts other things like that Guys, make sure you get yourself educated on these candidates. Find out the candidate that the best represents your views. We're heading into this primary season. It has already been contentious. I hope that it won't be, but I'm almost certain it will be even more contentious. But I think that if we look at the fact that we have to be bigger than ourselves, if we understand that this is that one shot that we got, 
get Tony Evers out. Bottom line, I don't care who it is. Hell, you can get my 10-year-old to go in there, and, I, and he'd probably do a better job than Tony Evers. Actually, he probably understands the Constitution better than Tony Evers, but that's beside the point. The point is, right now, if you think about this at this moment in time, this election is ours to screw up. Do we really want to be the one state that is not part of the red wave here come November of 2022? Are we really going to let, you know, differences to the point fracture the Republican Party here in Wisconsin so much so that we're going to spend all our time, our energy, our money literally cannibalizing each other only just to have Evers walk into, you know, the into a second term with ease? I can't have that. And I know you guys can't either. So we'll carry on more in the conversation here. Like I said, Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. We'll be back here, the Caramel Conservative uh, podcast. That'll have that back on Wednesday night. I got to get a guest lined up, so I'm sure I will have somebody there. So we will continue that conversations with series. We'll have all that good stuff going. And then I think we may be moving the show to three nights a week. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, we'll have to see because I've talked to a lot of people, so many people that I have not given shout outs like I should. But we will. We will soon. So on that night, guys, good night. God bless you. Thank you for checking us out here tonight. Um, and then of course, I will see you guys here Tuesday. See, every time I'm about to say bye, I always get like one more comment that like really gets me here. David put here, Ed, would you be interested in having your program on my on my page? WSRT News. We seek resistance to tyranny. Take a look. Of course I would. David, you don't even need to ask me. You got the green light on that, brother. You got the green light for sure. For sure. Okay. But yes, good night. God bless you. God bless the United States of America. God bless Wisconsin. I will see you guys later. I'm out.